Hi, Jim. I know you uh, had initially a few days ago said that you didn't expect to do a, a whole lot at the deadline here. Uh, what changed in the last couple of days and, and what are your thoughts on what you were able to do today? Well, yeah, we, you know, we, we had talked to our players. I talked to our guys. Um, you know, we weren't planning on doing a whole lot. Um, you know, we had some, some players with no move contracts. Um, you know, another player that, you know, just felt that at this particular time, you know, with everything that we've gone through that, um, you know, it wasn't, you know, for him, it just wasn't the right time to, to get started with another team. Um, you know, with Adam Gaudet, we just, with him, we just felt it was time for a change of scenery for him, bringing in Matthew Highmore. Highmore. We really like him as a, you know, we see them in the bubble. He's a guy that plays with a lot of energy, a lot of passion for the game. Um, so we're excited. You know, we kind of had our eye on him ever since he was a free agent, uh, junior free agent. He signed with Chicago. Uh, so, you know, we like, you know, the intangibles that he brings. He's fast. He gives us some speed. Uh, bring us, bringing in Madison Bowie. He's a he's a big a big strong kid. He's got all the physical tools, you know, to be a real good player. He's a good skater. Um, so we just felt like he gives us some size and strength on the back end. And you know, with Jordy, um, we weren't going to re-sign him, so we're giving him a chance to go play on a good team. And you know, they have a chance to make a run in the playoffs. And um, so he's got an opportunity to keep you know his career moving forward. So um, that's what we ended up doing. So I'm happy with what we got done today. Okay, we have a few hands here. So we'll ask that you please limit your questions to one each. We'll go next to Jay Janauer. Jim, can you give us a, an update as to just the overall health on the team? I'm curious how quick it takes an NHLer to get out of shape. I know you had guys skating today. Can you tell us how many guys were skating, what the overall health of the team is like, and also how's Travis Green's health doing? Okay, so we had 10 guys that skated today. Our facility, um, you know, got closed down yesterday. We had one more positive test, of you, as you guys know. Uh, we had 10 guys on the ice today. I, I you know, I've been talking to different players. Um, some guys feel, feel really good and they're ready to go. Other guys are still feeling some residual effects of the COVID. So, um, but you know, the next step for them is to start working out, getting on the ice, um, getting back in shape to play again. And, you know, we'll just deal with if they have any effects through, you know, this week skating and stuff with the COVID, we'll deal with them. But hopefully, you know, when we play Friday night, we got uh, we got our full team back in play. Um, as far as Travis, Travis is feeling better every day. I haven't talked to him yet today, so hopefully he's ready to go too when we get back going. Next up is Ben Kuzma. Jim, uh, Godet scored a dozen goals last year and you guys gave him a one-year extension just to kind of see where his progression was going to be at. We know he moved from the middle to the wing. Um, what was missing in his game, Jim, from your perspective in terms of making a decision on a player at age 24 who's kind of at the career crossroads at that age in terms of an organization making a decision on him? Well, I, I think it was it was a lot of different things went into the, the decision. Um, you know, at times he felt like he, you know, wanted to play higher in the lineup um, than he was. And, you know, we, we felt like, you know, when we talked to him, it was about his two-way game and keep improving upon that. Um, so, you know, I, I think it was just, it was the right time for him to get a fresh start. Um, you know, I, I talked to him, he thanked us for, you know, us drafting him, his development time with us and, and giving him an opportunity to be an NHL player. But I think it was just the right time for both parties to move on. Next is Ian McIntyre. Hi, uh, Jim. Our, uh, both Highmore and, and Bowie on they're going to be coming to Vancouver and how much might you need fresh, healthy bodies here in the next couple of weeks? Yeah, they're, they're both on their way. I think uh, Matthew Highmore, um, he got, he got on a flight. He was, they were in Chicago, was in Columbus today. So 
Um, I think he got on a flight at 2.30. I just talked to Madison um, and, you know, we're going to have to figure out how to get him out tomorrow and get him in here. They'll have to quarantine for a week and then they'll be available for us to, to, to get in the lineup and play. Um, as you see in our schedule, it's, you know, we got a, a tough schedule coming coming up here as once we get started playing, we, you know, I think in every, out of every five days, we play four games from almost now to the rest of the year. So uh, the, the good thing about it, the way I see it is the next couple of weeks, we're still at home. So hopefully our guys get feeling better, their families get feeling better. And then, you know, once we get on the road, we, they, they have that peace of mind where, you know, their families are doing well and they can concentrate on, on the hockey when we're on the road. So it, it's not going to be easy, but, it, you know, in this, in this season with all the things you have to deal with, with COVID and stuff, it is what it is. We'll go now to Patrick Johnston. Jim, uh, perhaps a pickup of a different sort. Vasily Put Colson's team was eliminated uh, earlier today. Wondering if there's any chance of him perhaps signing and, and playing a few games before the season. I know it's a tight timeline, but uh, just wondering if there's any chance of that. Yeah, so we're we're gonna. That's the you know the next order of business. Um, you know, like well, well, he's under contract till April 30th with his his team, and then if he's going to be on the World Championship team, then. Uh, you know, for Russia, then we won't get him till the end of May. So the season obviously will be over. So uh, we're going to look into that here. Uh, that's our next order of business and just see where that goes. Next is Gemma Carson-Smith. Hi, Jim. I'm um, just wondering if you can tell us what trade deadline was like this year compared to previous years. Yeah, well, it was, um, you know, it seemed like, you know, the, a lot of the top teams uh, this year, you know, that have that think they have a chance to win their divisions, we're adding players. I think in past years, you know, what we've seen is teams that were fighting for playoff spots would try to add to, to you know, for that push to make the playoffs. I don't necessarily know that we've seen that this year. So I think it was a buyer's market. And, you know, I think there was a lot of other things that got done along the way you know, for, for next year and the year after. But I think for the most part, it's a buyer's market today. Next up is Farhan Lalji. Jim, as far as uh, Bowie's acquisition goes, uh, how much of it was the fact that he is under contract for next year and kind of meets the requirement as far as um, being able to protect players for the Seattle expansion draft might give you some more flexibility on a guy like Myers and things like that. How much did that play into his acquisition? Yeah, well, I think, you know, that that was part of it, but we liked him as a prospect um, and he's played in the league. We like him as a player. You know, we got some UFA defensemen that, you know, on the back end that may or may not resign with us. So I think it gives us protection going forward. We get a guy that is mobile that, you know, he's, you know, can kill penalties for us. He can, you know, he's, he's a good enough skater where he can, play in today's game and be an effective player. I think last year he had a pretty good season in Detroit. Uh, so it gives us, you know, some flexibility here going forward as to, you know, what we want to do with, you know, when, what the team looks like for next year. Next up is Jim Morris. Hi, Jim. Thank you for taking the time to do this. Um, you touched on this a little earlier. Your team was in tough for a playoff spot before this all happened. Now looking at the schedule in front of you, how tough is this next month going to be for your team to try to get that playoff spot? Well, you know, that's Jim, that's why we play the game. So we'll, you know, I think the first, first and foremost, it's about, you know, getting healthy, getting back on the ice, getting back in game shape. And, you know, once, once we start playing games, like it's, it's going to be a, you know, like we play, you know, a lot of games in a short period of time. So um, my hope is, is that physically the guys feel well from, you know, coming off COVID and, you know, we can compete. I think we're going to get, I know you guys just talked to Pierce and, and hopefully we're going to get some injured guys back. So that should help out. And, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, we can win our share of games here. And, and so it, we can make it competitive going down the stretch. So um, that's the way we kind of see things. Um, and, you know, from there, we'll just see how it goes. But, 
know, at, at some point we might get some younger guys in the lineup. And uh, I know Yo Ole Ulevi, by moving Ben out now, he's going to get a good chance to play the rest of the year. So we're excited about that. Going out to Karen Larson. Karen, do we have you there? Okay, we'll go next to Daniel Wagner. Uh, Jim, looking at uh, Adam Gaudet this this season, uh, it seemed like he really wasn't getting a lot of putt, puck luck. He had the lowest shooting percentage of his career, really low on ice shooting percentage. Uh, was there any concern that perhaps you were selling low on a young player that maybe is about to bounce back if those uh, percentages go back up? Well, you know, I think, you know, he, he's, you know, he's a 24 year old player this year. Um, you know, to be quite honest, we expected him to take another step this year. Um, you know, he, he's, he's played all right for us, but we were expecting, you know, after the season he had last year, we we're expecting him to come in and take another step. And, and we didn't really feel like he did that. Now, maybe a change of scenery, he can, you know, get that back. Um, you know, he's, you know, like he's a guy that we've, you know, we drafted, we spent a lot of time with him in development. Uh, you know, we gave him a chance. He scored some big goals for us. The, the thing, you know, I think that he, we may miss from him is he's got a good release on a shot and he can score from the outside. Uh, but I think overall looking at, you know, his two-way game and stuff, we just felt like, you know, Matthew Highmore plays a more complete uh, two-way game and, you know, he's a guy that gives us speed and, you know, I think given an opportunity, he can score too. So, you know, it was, I think it's a good deal for both teams. Both players get a fresh start and we'll just see where it goes. Okay. We have time for two more here. We'll go to Thomas Drance. Jim, you pick up an additional 2021 pick and also trade down with Chicago. Uh, how does the uncertainty around this draft class with how few games some of the amateur players being drafted this year have played relative to what you'd normally see. Uh, how does that impact how you sort of value those picks? Well, I, I value picks in every round, like coming from an amateur scouting side, like, uh, you know, when I was running drafts, like a fifth round pick I'd be excited about. And so, you know, I think every pick you know, uh, the amateur scouts think that, you know, they're going to be able to add a player that, you know, can help the organization moving forward or play in the NHL. So, um, but we added an extra pick. We got eight picks in this year's draft, um, you know, going through the draft. I don't necessarily know that it's a, it's a real deep draft this year, but there's certain players that, you know, we like in each of the rounds where I feel like we can still draft well and get good players that could turn out to be NHL players. So I think, you know, I'm excited about getting that extra pick uh, for our group. And so it's, you know, it's just something that we're not going to have the viewings like we had in past years. We're going to, you know, rely a little bit more on maybe some analytics work this year and, you know, the video work all of our, our guys have, have done, but I still feel like in those rounds, we can find players that can play in the league. And we'll take our final question here from Brendan Batchelor. Hey, Jim, uh, you talked about potentially getting some guys back from injury. Do you have an update on Elias Pedersen's status here? No, we don't, we don't have an update yet. He's, you know, he's back skating. Um, he's supposed to meet with a specialist tomorrow and, um, or, or Wednesday he's, you know, and we'll get a, a better report as to, to when he's going to be back playing, but I know he's skating and working out and stuff. So I'm hoping that, you know, he's able to play here by the end of the week, but I guess that we'll have a better idea once he meets with the specialists on Wednesday.